praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are coming to the first point of the episode of triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, the Palm Sunday. Number one, the person of Jesus with the power. What is the speciality of this man? Sitting on the donkey, triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The, the person and uh, his power. Number one, my dear friends. The Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. All the Gospels very well give an account of this entry into Jerusalem. Which means to say, a very, very important historical fact is this. Second thing is, Jesus as a person has become very, very famous with he raising Lazarus from the dead. In Bethany and the entire surroundings, including Jerusalem, the incident of Lazarus coming back to life has made him really famous. And the time Jesus selected is, as I told, one of the important feasts of Jews, the Pascha, where thousands and thousands of people from all over the world are gathered in Jerusalem. And this man, Jesus, has selected that particular time to reveal himself to the whole world and especially to the people. And as a person, he is all-knowing. He is all-knowing. Because when Jesus gives a command to the disciples, he says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 27, However, so that we do not give offense to them to go to the sea and cast a hook, take the first fish that comes up, and then you open the mouth, you will find a coin, take that and give it to them for you and for me. Jesus declares that the coin will be found in the mouth of the fish when he goes and puts his hook. The knowledge he has. He told the apostles, go and you will find a donkey with his calf tied over there. Untie and bring it. If somebody asks, say that the master needs it. The foreknowledge of Jesus about the things that are going to happen, the things that exist, the personal presence of Jesus. Secondly, my dear friends, the power that he has it. Jesus says to the apostles, go and you will find a donkey and its calf, cord, untie and bring it here. If somebody asks, why, why are you doing this? Say that the master needs it. My dear friends, I want to ask an interesting question to you. If you have a donkey or a cow or a buffalo or something in your house, in your cattle shed, and somebody unties, and then when you ask, the master needs it, what kind of a reaction does it come up in your mind? But here, see, what a power, what authority in which Jesus is saying, say to them, the master needs it, the authority and the power that he has it. And this authority and power, Jesus speaks in a letter to Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, if you read, um, interestingly, and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. It must be done that every tongue must confess that Jesus is the Lord, the power that belongs to Him. My dear friends, in His power, He uses the material things. In His power, He uses the people. In His power, He uses everything to show that He is supreme and He has a power over the nature over every created things, for He is the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When Jesus was um, feeding the 5,000 people, a small boy had five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus takes the five loaves and two fish, dear friends, and says the prayer to his heavenly father, blesses and gives them for distribution. These five loaves, two fish, turned out to be a food for 5,000 people. But dear friends, see the power, see the person involved in this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And such a man is entering into the city of Jerusalem. And such a man is sitting on the donkey and entering into Jerusalem. And such a man is being welcomed with the palm leaves and the clothes on the road and people shouting front and back, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. Just imagine the dramatic scene, the situation created there. And moving on to my dear friends, the presentation. What is presented there, my dear friends? We read in the book of Zechariah, my dear friends, chapter 9, book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9, if you read beautifully, it is read there, the speciality of the presentation, Jesus in the Jerusalem. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. Can you imagine a king sitting on a donkey and being traveled? Jesus said, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are the meek and humble of heart, for they shall be comforted. There's a blessing, a blessedness in being meek and in being humble, my dear friends. Now, in his humility and in his nothingness, what Jesus is able to say, the others are not able to say. Jesus spoke of a kingdom. Jesus spoke of a kingship. Jesus spoke of an authority. Jesus spoke of a power which neither the Pilate nor the Jewish authorities nor the scribes and Pharisees nor even the people could really understand. When Pilate asked a question to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? He said, I am, but my kingdom does not belong to this world. I am the king, my kingdom does not belong to the world. Now, my dear friends, this presentation is the kingdom that he speaks of, the power that he speaks of is a power, a kingdom, that delivers people from the clutches of sin, number one. From the clutches of devil and the evil, number two. And number three, from all selfishness, it sets and liberates as a person free. Where the Abraham turns into Abraham. Saul turns into Paul. Jacob turns into Israel. My dear friends, Simon son of John turns into Peter. What a change. This type of a real presentation is what the spiritual purpose of this triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And finally, my dear friends, the purpose, the purpose, the purpose is only one. John 1 29, John the baptizer pointed out to Jesus to say, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In every kingdom, the soldiers and the people die for the king. For the king is everything for them. But here we have a king. 
Here we have a kingdom where the king dies for the people. The king dies for the sinners. What a contrast to here, my dear friends. Soldiers and people die for the king to protect him, to serve him. But here the king comes to die for the sinners and for the people. The purpose for which Jesus came into the world is, is to this, that to lay down one's life and to pay his life as a ransom for so many people to liberate and set free you and me from all these sinful, heavy birds and ordinance. Therefore, on the Palm Sunday, when the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem takes place here, my dear friends, this particular purpose that he has come to die and to set me and you free. Therefore, when we celebrate the Palm Sunday, when we carry the palm leaf and say Hosanna to the king, remember, I am calling him as my savior, one who died and saved me. Let us pray that this may help that this may liberate and set you and your family free. God, our loving Father, we remember the great historical event of this Palm Sunday and the very person of Jesus with the power, the presentation of Jesus, the way he has entered and the purpose of Jesus for his death may really find a meaning in all of us who listen to this word, that he may really set us free from the power of sin, from the power of Satan, and from all selfishness, that every listener of this word and his family be delivered under that power. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.